so much has been done by the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information to advance learning of their students. And with me to talk about these achievements is Education Officer within the Ministry, Christina Addington. Welcome Mrs. Addington. Thanks for having me. Tell me a bit about the different stages of hearing loss and how it affects the ability to learn in the traditional school system. Okay, well, Andrew, hearing loss occurs on a continuum based um, going from hard of hearing to deafness. Um, and on this continuum, there are, very dif there are different levels. So we start off with a mild hearing loss, then you can have a moderate loss, a severe loss, or a profound loss. It's important to note that it is the level of loss being experienced that, by the child that really impacts on if the child is able to be educated in the traditional system or if the child has to be educated in a segregated system. For children who are experience mild hearing losses, for the most part, they're able to cope and experience success in the, the regular school system. Um, but for this to happen, there have to be a couple of factors that have to be in place. Um, firstly, the student has to be amplified, fitted with hearing aids. The child has to be in a small school setting, most importantly, in a small class size, so that there is not a lot of background information to distort information being shared between teacher and the students in the classroom environment. Um, Another thing is the teacher working with a child has to ensure that she or he utilizes specific strategies that will help the child maximize whatever residual hearing that the child has. So things like placing the child at the front of the class. Um, the teacher has to also remember he or she cannot turn their backs to the class while teaching. They have to ensure that they always have the child's attention, let them know, let the child know when they're speaking to them. And the greatest thing I think also is that the parents have to be very, very involved because once there's great parent involvement um, in the educational life of the child with a mild loss, then this will better ensure success. So Mrs. Addington, how many specialized schools are there for these students? Well, um, to date, we have seven special education schools for the deaf across the island in Jamaica. We have three public schools which are operated um, in partnership between the Ministry of Education and the Jamaica Association for the Deaf. These are the Danny Williams School for the Deaf. They are in Kingston in Pope Estate, Papin, and they have two satellites. One, a preschool center, which is attached to the school, and another unit class at the Excelsior Primary School. The St. Christopher School for the Deaf is also a primary school, and that school is in Brownstone, St. Anne, and it has a boarding facility. And Lister Mayor Gilby High School for the Deaf is the high school for the deaf. And that school has two satellites, so they have a satellite in Maypen, and they have a satellite in Port Antonio. The other four schools are private schools. Um, they are the Caribbean Christian Center for the Deaf. They operate three schools, one in St. James, one in Manchester, and one in Kingston, and the Jamaica Christian School for the Deaf, and they operate in Lethe, St. James. So how has the ministry been advancing the learning of these students in these particular institutions? Well, the ministry has been playing its part. Um, for the most part, there is greater interaction and greater support to the public schools. Um, one of the things that um, the ministry has done a couple of years ago, through discussions, the special education unit lobbied for posts of teachers' assistants to be established for the schools, special schools, and so the schools for the deaf, all the schools for the deaf, um, public schools, they got teachers' assistants. It's important to note that these teachers' assistants, they're not called teachers' assistants in the schools for the deaf, but they're called deaf culture facilitators. So although their role is to assist in helping the teachers to bring across the concepts. They also have another, which is a more important role, which is they are the deaf models for the children. The children are deaf, they are de deaf, 
so the children have models and they display the culture, the deaf culture. So then and there, the children are seeing and learning about their culture and learning that it is okay to be deaf. They're deaf and it's a part of life and how they can um, succeed. The ministry also has put in place um, quality education circles and all the schools for the deaf are engaged in a quality education circle. So the principals meet with um, administrators from other schools, they share information and so the principals are able to learn and, and get advice and, and share information. The High School for the Deaf has benefited from being placed on the e-learning Jamaica project and so all the teachers there have been trained and are better equipped to you know infuse the technology into the teaching learning process. So what are the advantages of learning in these specialized institutions? Main advantage I would say is um, at the schools for the deaf the pupil teacher ratio is eight to one. So we talk about eight students to one teacher. Now when you compare that with a regular school system where it's one to 35, but in most cases one to 40 or, or some more, we can say that the children are in a, in a setting which um, makes concessions that they cannot hear. So they need more time to be spent um, interacting, engaging in you know, learning. That the teachers for the most part in these institutions are special education trained. So the teachers are trained in deaf education um, and while in school they, they have what they call in-service training but the Jamaica Association for Deaf provides training in them gaining Jamaican sign language competence. So we know that the teachers you know are being trained to effectively communicate with the children. So they're getting the, the information because it's been effectively passed on to them in a manner which they understand. The methodologies used are methodologies which are specific for enhancing learning with the population. Um, and, and as I say, you know, small setting, persons know and better understand them and are better able to work with them. Perfect note to end on and signs for you to follow up on. We want to thank Mrs. Christina Addington from the Special Education Unit in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information for sharing with us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, until next time, see you around. <laughs>